Hi there, welcome to Car Concepts. Today we'll be working on 12 must know at Excel functions. First of all, I'll be using this dummy data that I've created. And let's start with the first function that is sum. The first sum function is in Excel provides a summation of different values or a range of values that you get. So I'll type in equal to sum tab. And then let's select V2, control shift down arrow, and bracket close, press enter. This is the sum of all the zeros made by different departments. You can also use the auto sum function available under home ribbon in the editing tab, and you will get the same answer. Furthermore, uh, there's the sum if function. Sum if function is basically if the certain uh, criteria is met, then do the summation of all these values. So if I say sum if department name is A, then Excel would first figure out all the department names with A and then sum their sales. So let's try and use this function, sum if. Uh, you have to provide the range for the criteria. So you'll have to select department and then the criteria. So my criteria is that the department should be A. So I'll start double quote A, double quote N and comma. Some range is the value of the sales. So press Control Shift down. So what we are seeing right now is that if in A2 to A17 there's a value of there's a value A, then sum A, then sum all the values from sales. This is the department sales for A. Now let's look at the count function. Count function basically counts the number of values that there are in your table. Of course, we can easily find the count function in this, but sometimes the database is bigger and this would be really helpful then. So let's once again select P2, control shift down, close and enter. So this we have 16 values, which is consistent to the table that we can see here. Then comes the count if function. So once again, we'll provide a criteria that counts these particular values if and only if this uh, criteria matches. So count if yeah, yeah, give a range. So I'll be giving range this. And my criteria is greater than 15,000. So there are only three values greater than 15,000. Also, if you want to calculate the count, if you want to count the values of a particular department, so how many times a single department appeared, in such cases you will go count if bracket open, select A2 to E17, and then select, let's say D. Close present. So there are four values for the column D, for the department D. Then there comes VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP, we'll be using this another dummy table that I've made. This is basically the department number and the number of employees that that department have. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to look at this particular value that is the department and give a random value, say A, B, C, D, F, here. And I want the table to display the number. And, and I'll put a formula in this column to display the number of employees. So let's first type in the formula. So we'll go ahead and type in VLOOKUP and we need to write the lookup values. So I want them to look up the value in this column. Let's press comma. Then table array. Our table is this. Then column index number. So from which column in the table you want your value to be displayed. Since I'll be giving department and expecting number of employees, I'll have to say one, two. So column number two. And then the range lookup. So what this asks you is that in the lookup value, that is the F2 column that you have selected, do you want me to make an appropriate match in your table, approximate match in your table, or an exact match? So uh, I need uh, so I need an exact match. So I'll go ahead and type in false, or let's say go into this and press tab, bracket close, enter. Now let's give a department value, let's say B, 46 employees, which is matched here, and C, 20 employees, etc. So this is a way to use VLOOKUP and if you have a big table and you just want the number of employees to, uh, shown side by side, you can use this formula. So let's try and add this VLOOKUP formula into this sheet. So let's add a new line. Number of employees. So VLOOKUP, we want you to look up this file. Our table array is this. Column index number is 2 and range lookup is false. So let's press enter and let's drag and drop. And 
so uh, Excel does change all these the range of the table every time you drag and drop. So when you go ahead with this, you'll have to put in the dollar signs here. Now, if we drag and drop again, we will get the exact values that we need. You can cross reference this over here. So 5, 46, 20, and 50. And that's all the values that we got here. So you can, if you're a really big data set and you want to add these values, this is a nice way to do that. Then we have the edge lookup. So let's say this table was transposed to look like this. In this case, we need to look, look at the edge lookup value. That is the horizontal. If it's an, if, there is, uh, if your reference table is horizontal, then we use this value. Otherwise, uh, then we use edge lookup. Otherwise, we don't use v lookup. So let's start edge lookup equals to edge lookup. My lookup value is over here. Comma, my table array is this convention. And my row index number is two. And my range lookup is Oops. Press enter and again you can change the values and you get the number of employees that you want. That's how H lookup and VLOOKUP lookup work. Let's go back to the filter function. So I'll select this table and then I'll go in a home section in editing page and select sort and filter and select filter. So the headers that I have in my table are selected. So the headers I have in my table do now have filters on them. Here's how we can use the filters. So we can select the values that we want to display, A, B, C, D, etc. We can uh, make a, we can sort these by letters. In the sales column, we can, in the sales column, we can again select the ones we want and the ones we don't want. Then there's number filters, so equals does not equal or greater than. So if I say greater than, and again, press OK. You'll see the three values are displayed and let's clear the filter and see what our count they've got it what for us so we got three that's another way of displaying the only ones that we required now let's look at, look at the trim function trim function basically removes any unnecessary spaces in your string so if we have a list of names long list of names and you don't want to do the manual work of removing each one one by one so you can simply put in a normal formula trim tab that you want to trim, so let's select A2 and press enter. Let's drag this formula down. And now we have this, uh, and now you'll see that all the names, all the text strings have removed the unnecessary spaces. Moving on to the max function, max and min function does basically what it says. You can type in max, and you go ahead and select the sales. And you get the maximum sales from yours. And let's do the same with the number of employees. Max. And we get the maximum employees. The min function gives you the minimum value. So min. Select sales. Then min. Let's select. Then the ceiling function and floor function. Ceiling function and floor function are the mathematical functions. So what happens in a ceiling function is, if I give a value, say 5.5, it will immediately give me the value of 6. And if I do a ceiling function, if I give the value of 5.5 to a floor function, it will give me the value of 5. Basically, it rounds off, ceiling function rounds off to the highest value, highest nearby integer, and floor function rounds off to the high, lowest nearby integer. Let's work with a few values and you'll understand better. So let's just ceiling. I'll be using ceiling.math, and I'll give the number... Tap. So I get 7. Let's try and give it, give it in the function ceiling.math 6.4. And let's first tap, you'll get 7 again. But if we give the same value to float function 6.84, you'll get 6. So it's basically a mathematical function that you can use here to trim down the integers. And those were all the 12 important functions that you must know in Excel. So thank you for watching that concepts. We hope this video was helpful to you. If you like this video and would like more such videos, please consider subscribing.